Hello everyone, it's Adam here. Uh, in today's video, we are back in the Hyundai Ioniq. And uh, let's take a, a chat here of where we are with the uh, the mileage. So there's our odometer. And this is our range with 100% battery. <laughs> what a piece of crap car. Let's get started. All right, so we're in the uh, 2019 Ioniq with uh, 12,726 on the odometer. And on Saturday, in just three short days, uh, this car gets dropped off with a uh, Carvana for sale. And I'll talk about Carvana and Vroom. I'm working on both of them right now. I'll, work, I'll talk about that experience in a later video. So I'm selling two cars uh, at the same time with two different companies. But uh, I want to talk about the Ionic because the Ionic is, is, is sold. I've signed away the, the rights to it and it gets dropped off Saturday. And so I wanted to, I, I post on the blog, so you can read that if you want to. There's now three or four posts about the Hyundai on the blog. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of go over what my experience has been with this car. Um, I purchased it uh, in November, October or November of 2019. So we're at the 18 month mark. It's now April of 2021. And uh, May 1st is the uh, registration's renewal date. So um, I'm about to spend another $400 or so to register this thing for the year. I thought, do I really want it for another year? Um, summer is here. I run a motor, so I, so I bought this car I wasn't looking for a car. I bought it because it was a crazy good deal. So just to go over the specifics for you guys, $1,000 down, uh, $79 a month, 36 months, uh, 30,000 mile lease. Um, I got back $500 from Allstate bonus drive. I got back an extra $50 gift card from Hyundai for the test drive. Um, and I also got back uh, $550 as a blank check sent to my town office for registration. Hyundai sent a blank check to my town office for registration for the first year. And then they sent me an extra like $350 like a month later randomly. Um, I don't know why, but they sent it back to me. And then um, I spent about $300 a year for insurance. Um, so overall, what ended up happening was um, I paid out of pocket about $2,281 total down payment, 18 car payments, um, and uh, mm -hmm. registration and insurance. Uh, well, not registration, because it was covered. Uh, and then in the 18 months I owned it, they gave me 1450 in rebates. So the actual cost of owning this car for 18 months or leasing it was 831. Uh, and my solar panels actually create excess solar power that I don't use. And so I, I don't really have a bill for charging this thing. Uh, other than maybe a hundred dollars I've spent in DC fast chargers over the last 18 months. So, you know, 831 out of pocket for an 18 month lease. Um, the only maintenance I have was I went to Hyundai for the 10,000 mile service, which was included. Uh, so that trip cost me a bit in power, but it wasn't, uh, it wasn't a paid for service. All I did was rotate the tires. That's all they did. They, they honestly told me I don't even need to be there at all. <laughs> um, and, and then, uh, the buyout quote from Hyundai Finance today, uh, they want 15509 to buy this car out. Um, and that's, so that's basically the, the buyout plus the remaining 18 payments. Um, and then uh, Carvana at 13,000 miles in the odometer, roughly, offered me 16570 So in fact, if you pull those numbers into a spreadsheet, uh, I made $230 by keeping this car for 18 months. And so, I don't have any sort of like negative things to say about that part of the experience because, well, of course, who wouldn't want to have a car for 18 months uh, that's brand new uh, with no maintenance required uh, and, and solar panels, uh, you know, and, and, the, and they actually get $230 back just by taking, putting this thing in their, their driveway for 18 months. What a crazy good deal. And so I wanted to talk now about like the 13,000 mile owner experience of having this car. I believe I did one at 10,000. So if you've seen that video, you've, you've seen most of this already. Uh, and I put it all together in my blog about not, not just the Ionic experience, but the, the EV experience and what that's been like for me as a, a 34 year old uh, guy who is not single, but also don't have kids. Um, but I live in rural New Hampshire. The nearest fast charger is like 25 miles away. The second nearest fast charger is 75 miles away. Um, and also keep in mind that six, six months out of the year, it snows here. And about a month out of the year, it's like 20 degrees below zero. And so, you know, I am basically a very extreme EV use case, which is, you know, no charging stations, 
Uh, my solar panels are covered six months out of the year. We have very deep, heavy snow and ice. Um, and we have three other vehicles. So we have my Golf R, Heather's Golf Sport Wagon, my Ford Escape, and the Ionic, as well as four motorcycles. So this car was never really meant to be anything more than just like a, a miles offset from my Golf R. Um, that's what it was. And for 18 months, 13,000 miles, that's 30,000 miles that didn't go into other vehicles. So that's pretty nice. Heather actually stored her Sport Wagon and my Golf R off-site all winter. We just used this in the Escape. Um, so we used this on the days that it was snow, snow on the ground, and we used the Escape on days that it was snowy. Worked out super well. And so um, just with all that in, in mind, you know, the EV ownership, you know, I'm, I'm prepared to say publicly that like, I'm about 10 years away from buying or leasing another EV. Um, I, I have zero interest in getting another one of these. Uh, the Ionic 5 is coming, and what they've done with the Ionic 5 is they've, I think, doubled the range or doubled the kilowatt power. They've added rider assist features. They've added more comfortable seats, more technology. They've actually added auto rain sensing wipers, which this doesn't have. Uh, more LEDs. You know, they, they, they basically redesigned the Ionic from the ground up, and and that's a car that is going to cause depreciation of this thing to just fall off a cliff. Uh, this car was 36, 36 grand new. And right now, Ionics in this trim and this mileage are going for about fifteen to seventeen thousand um, dollars after just eighteen months. And so, not a good car to hold on for depreciation reasons because the Ionic Five is going to blow it out of the water. But EVs in general, you know, don't work for me because I'm someone that doesn't mind doing my own maintenance. So the the whole internal combustion engine problem of oil changes and diff fluid and air filters, I don't really care. That's, you go to AutoZone and you buy those fluids and consumables and you do it yourself. I just did Heather's um, all four brake and pad changes on our sport wagon at 85,000 miles and did it in a couple of hours in my driveway. So, you know, that, those sort of costs that the EV owners cite don't matter to me. Um, th th then there is, you know, ongoing issues that compound. The same for the EVs, that they have battery degradation. Uh, you know, this car in specifically has a 165 mile range on a good day. It's 57 degrees today and I'm showing 120 miles range from 100% full with no heat on. If I turn the heat on, it goes to 112. So 112 mile range, uh, not on the interstate, which goes even worse. And then on days that it was like 10 degrees below zero and I had to run the heat, obviously, because I would die, uh, it would show like a 60 or 55 or 60 mile range. Uh, I think one day I might have shown a 35 mile range. Uh, you know, that's not usable. And even in a Tesla, which will come with 250 mile range as standard on the base core models that are like 40 grand, um, you, you know, that's going to be like 160 to 140. It's just, it's unusable up here when, when it takes an hour to go to a brewery, when it takes an hour and a half to go to a movie theater, uh, and there's no DC fast chargers. I mean, I in November, I went on to Whole Foods, which is... 78 miles away, I almost didn't make it. There's a DC fast charger at Whole Foods down there. I almost didn't make it there. And that was with the heat off and Heather over here bundled up, you know, cold as hell going, this car sucks. And she's right, it does. You know, we almost didn't make it to the charging station just to go buy fancier groceries. Uh, and, and that's 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 a shit experience, uh, you know, for an EV that costs 36 grand new. Um, and, and this is all with the stipulation that I didn't pay any money to own this thing for 18 months, and it still isn't a car that isn't a car that I love. Um, has very narrow tires for fuel economy, but that also means that you basically just get stuck if you're on a sheet of ice. You just your front instant torque plus thin tires, you just spin. Um, you know, charging at home was okay. It wasn't fast. We just used the wall charger. That was that was. You know, by the time I got home the next morning, it was charged. That was totally fine. Um, we couldn't do a road trip in this car. The the charging time sucks. I mean, you know, if you look at our usage habits, this car for around town, fantastic. And I said in my last video too that if you were to give this car to your 16 year old kid or your elderly grandmother or grandfather, both of which just need to go around town, limited geographic range. Uh, they don't want to deal with maintenance. They just want to go to the bank and the grocery store and the school functions and then come home and plug it in and charge it. And you have solar panels. Like 
What a great car. I actually know a guy locally who leased two of these and gave it to his two kids and said, for three years, there's your car. Plug it in at home. There's no maintenance. Uh, you know, just be careful with it and cheap, right? You know, sub $100 a month each. Uh, totally perfect use case for that. But for us, you know, this was already a round town car. It would never have been a road trip car. And I don't think any EV would have been a road trip car for us because we don't like stopping. Uh, last uh, year before COVID, we drove both directions 21 hours straight to and from Florida without stopping, except for gas in the wagon. Um, I do 1,000 mile days on my motorcycle at least twice a year. Um, you know, the, that kind of stamina when, when driving or riding is something that we just have baked into us. And, and the thought of having to, I mean, once I was trying to go to the airport in this thing, which is a two and a half hour drive to the airport, I stopped at the Whole Foods location. The, the bays were full. And so I waited an hour and then charged for an hour and then got to the, I mean, instead of two and a half hours to get to the Boston airport, it took me four and a half hours. And the same thing happened on the way home. So we're talking nine hours to go to and from the airport just because of having an EV. And, and that, 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 that's not adequate. <laughs> that's BS. Uh, so we want EVs that have battery swappable technology. So I put on my blog here, here's what I want from an EV. I want 1000 mile range minimum. If you can't figure it out, figure it out. I want instant charging. The same time it takes me to fill up my tank with gas, I want that kind of charging. And so if it means swappable batteries, fine. I want, um, no battery degradation when it's cold out, none, zero. I want the range negative 20 all the way up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and I want all of the payload and comforts and, and towing capacity of a, you know, a normal SUV, a Forerunner, a Tahoe, uh, a, a, a Ford Explorer. Uh, I want to be able to pull our motorcycles, put three kids in the back, go camping for the weekend, um, and get there in northern Vermont or northern Maine without needing to stop for an electric charge, which there are none up there. Or go to, you know, go up to northern Labrador or Quebec and go camping and not need to trickle charge off of some guy's hut for eight days to be able to get home. Um, you know, we're not overlanding, we're just in a rural part of the country. And so, you know, if it seems like I'm kind of upset about this, it's not that I don't think that the EVs and the Teslas are, are not great products, but they are inherently flawed by what makes them great. Uh, the last point on my blog is I want to see a closed loop recycling slash renewable uh, uh, system be put in place. So what I mean by that is I want to know when I buy a 100 kilowatt hour Tesla that I'm buying a product that was fully 100% sourced from an existing Tesla battery that is now, you know, out of, you know, end of life, out of commission. I, want, I don't want those metals to be mined again and again and again till they're all gone. I don't want the carbon cost of creating a lithium ion battery to be the same every single time someone buys an electric car. And, and as these things degrade, I want them repurposed. I want to know that, that the full loop of every material in this car has been reused because the, the cost of, of purchasing an electric vehicle, the carbon cost up front, you need to own it for 10 years to, to get back to where you would be with the ICE vehicles. And that, that figure needs to change. We need to, you know, if this thing was 100% renewable materials in and out, uh, and I knew that when I was done with it in three years, which is my average ownership of cars, that I was going to be able to know that that car wasn't going to be put into a junkyard and, and pollute our, our waterways, I would feel a lot better about buying an EV, uh, especially if it got a thousand mile range, it charged instantly and it worked in cold weather. Um, the cost doesn't matter. I don't, this, you know, I wasn't complaining this car, this car is expensive. Uh, I don't mind paying $70,000 for a car as long as it has that longevity and that good philosophy behind it. Um, and we're not there yet. So, I think maybe in 10 years, I think maybe in three to four years, I'll have an electric motorcycle. Uh, again, for around town, riding to and from work, 100 mile range, that's fine. Uh, it'll, it'll be purpose built to get me to and from work or to see a, a buddy. Uh, it won't be a touring motorcycle. And, and I think those of you that you live, have, have EVs, if you live in rural America, you're in my situation. If you're not, then you're, you just can't argue with me because you're in a city. You don't have the problems that I have. You're probably not in negative 20 degree temperature. Um, so overall, the, the EV experience, assuming this thing was twice the range, uh, was not a good one. 
And um, the only solace I have is that I'm getting out now while I'm still ahead. You know, I don't know if I had taken this lease to term, if it would have had the same resale value as it did today, which is about 16 grand. And uh, I don't know, you know, also factoring in two more years of uh, insurance, re insurance uh, renewals and registrations. So, you know, it's a good time to sell it. Uh, I'm not gonna miss it. <laughs> <laughs> I told Heather I was selling it. She was like, oh, good. We can finally get that place in our, our driveway back for motorcycles. Uh, so that's my update on the Ionic. It's gone. Last video about it. Um, I may do a follow-up video on the math of Carvana versus Vroom and how that experience went by selling two vehicles with them. Uh, because, spoiler alert, the Ford Escape is also going away. And so um, that's the update on the Ionic. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. It's a nice, beautiful day in New Hampshire. I'm going to go home, eat some lunch, and then hop on the GS and go for a ride. And uh, I hope you all have a good day. Drive safe. And if you're thinking about buying an Ionic 5, do it. Just make sure that it fits your needs, uh, that you're in that demographic, that you're in that, that coverage area of EV chargers, that the range anxiety isn't a problem, that you're not going to be road tripping with it, and that you accept the limitations of battery technology and go for it. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Bye.